Hi guys, we want to do our Bible study. You know that today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday. Tomorrow is going to be um, Palm Sunday. We are already at, uh, what's the Sunday? Wow, tomorrow is the 24th, I believe, of, uh, yeah, tomorrow's 24th of March. We're already at the end of the month. Isn't that something, guys? We, phew, we went through the month quickly. And we still haven't done our 31 hour fast. So stick with me on this during the weekday. It's easier for me to do this because I'm not going to be doing anything. I don't believe. But Tuesday to Wednesday are free days. So I'm going to definitely challenge myself on this 31 hours. It's going to be Tuesday at 12 to Wednesday at 7 p.m. And I'm sticking to it. I'm not going to do nothing but water. We're doing a complete cleanse because we're going into a warmer season where it's going to be easier to fast for a number of days without any problems, you know. And we're still going to do whatever little workouts we have to do along with our fast. You know, we're not going to let that fast intimidate us and keep us from continuing to stick with these little mini workouts because the mini workouts are, are a little bit helpful too, you know. So I got this little small... I'm only going to have one of these coffees tonight. I'll take this fish oil. I hate fish oil, but I'm going to take it because I've been having some little aches. They said fish oils help with uh, if it's cold and you're having little aches or something. So I'd rather take this than take a muscle relax. And my back has been, been getting a little bit better. So when you get better, you ease up off of the relaxants. You're not going to take any medication to the demise of you, you know. So last week we were in Genesis. Uh, I want to get you all the way up to uh, where Moses is going to help the children of Israel. And I'm going to try to get that uh, up before, let's see, this is the 24th. I'm probably going to be reading the Bible Monday, not Monday, I'm going to read it Tuesday and Wednesday on my fast because I want to help get all the way up to where, you know, from Genesis to the next generation of Moses. Moses was the next generation to come after Abraham, Isaac. First it was Noah, then Abraham, Isaac. Then we went all the way over to Exodus and Moses. So I want to get you up to that. Moses situation and Pharaoh and saving the children of Israel because of Easter Sunday. This is Palm Sunday. Easter Sunday is next Sunday. And when we become Easter Sunday, you know, the Ten Commandments is going to come on and you can see the whole story on t television on Easter Sunday. I think it's um, going to be on Saturday, March 30th. It says ABC is going to have the Ten Commandments on. So in the scriptures, we're going to keep reading. I want to get you all the way through this part up here because we need to know some of these customs and things in the Bible. But I want to read to you something first that I picked up on today uh, before we go into that. For some reason, I came upon Luke 12. You know, we're in the New Testament where we're living, but we look back at what happened because everything is related, right? Oh, I don't like fish oil. I normally like the little small one. It's not a fish oil, but it's something else they call it. It's like a fish, but it's like a little sardine, and they made it into a pill. Uh, it's a little small one, I forget. Sometimes I had that last year, but this year I haven't been able to get it. They were sold out, but I get this fish oil. So I'm not a big fish eater. But I'll eat it sometime. I'm I'm more of a beef, turkey, pork girl. <laughs> you know, we're eating carnivore. But I will eat fish every now and then, but I'm not a big fish eater. I want to take you over to Luke 12. Because I know during the Easter season, people worry. And the Lord said, listen, the Lord does not want us to worry. He said, in everything, come to him in prayer. Don't worry about nothing. 
because if you worry, it's going to cancel out your prayers. So I'm going to read to you Luke 12. Is it Luke 12? Let me see. Maybe Luke 22. Let me, let me look it up in the back of my Bible. I read it today, and I said this really hits home for me because this is where I'm at right now. When you feel anxious about things, I'm going to read it to you because I think it'll help you. Just give me a minute. Let me find out where it's at. I just read it today. Here it is. I like this Bible because I can look up how I feel, and it'll take me to the scripture. I like this. So it's Luke 12, 22 through 34. And I hope this helps someone. I'm going to do this, then I'm going to give you a little bit of take the limits off a of God book. And then we're going to jump over to Genesis. Here it is. It says Luke 12 and 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, this is written in red, this is Jesus talking directly, and I'm talking directly to you from him. He said, think of yourself as a disciple. He said, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. The things that's on the outer appearance of your body is unimportant as compared to the life that you hold inside. Listen at this now. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. They have nowhere to put anything because they don't carry them with them. And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? the fowls of the air. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? What can your worry do for you? Can it help, help you in any way? No. That's what the scripture said. It said, what can you do with taking thought about it? Add anything to it. Nothing. Did you get that? You can't do nothing because you're worried about it. It ain't going to help you add nothing. It ain't going to help nothing. Okay, listen, if ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Amen. All of Solomon's things he had, all the glory, glory and he did in his life or whatever the things he owned, the little bitty flowers on the ground are more beautiful than that. This is the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus speaking right here. He's telling you what's going on. And listen to this. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow cast into the oven, how much more would he clothe you, O oh, ye of little faith? Stop worrying, because he going to provide for your needs, whatever they may be. Because he provide for everything, every need of the world. And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. He's going to give you what you need. Don't worry about it. And he loved to take care of his little children. And he will take care of you. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not. Where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. 
and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, that may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come to the second watch or come in the third and find that so blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known the hour, the thief will come, he will have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. But ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing so, so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. So he says here in the scripture, he says the servant of the person that is being a servant unto God, spending his time in the word, giving alms to others, whether it be, you know, whatever you have. Some of us don't have much, but if you have a, um, whatever you have of offering, if you have food in your house that you know you can, somebody can use, give food. You know, if you have some extra monies that you can spare, give money. If you have some time uh, that you can give to the church, volunteer your time in different ways if there's something there that you can do there's always something that the church need uh your local church whether you are joining as a member or you're visiting and trying to join there's something that can be done and even me i have to i'm going to give some food over here i have some cans and things that i know i'm not going to eat i don't want to throw away food because something you don't have someone else may like so give that, give something, you know, and then don't be short to give a thanksgiving, praise, a worship to God. When you visit the house of the Lord, the Lord loves to hear our praises and our singing and our prayers. He loves that. Give that offering. That's an easy offering to give. And then it says... <clears throat> And then the thing of this this topic, God said, stay in the way of following me so that when I come, he said he coming like a thief in the night. When I come, don't be found not in the way of serving the Lord, reading your Bible, praying, doing those things which you should be doing uh, in this world. I'm going to read to you something about that in a minute. Because some people will say, it is, these are the people that are in the lukewarm church. Remember I told you about the lukewarm? The person that said, I'm a Christian, but I'm over here doing something else on the side. Yet they're not doing the thing that they should be staying focused on trying to attend to. So that they can go forward in their Christian living. Because if you're doing two things, how can you go forward in this one thing? Because your time is going to be distracted. And sometimes the one thing over here on the side, which is not of God, will win out. And that will be where your time will be served. And you will look up and years have gone and days have gone. And you have not went back to this first love, which was God. You have not went back to the service of the church or trying to go to church or trying to live your life in a better manner. You've stayed over here. Okay. And like you said, a thief come in the night. And you don't know when he's coming, but you're over here doing this. And he's not going to say, and, and that's 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 the ten, the ten virgins with the lamps and the oil, right? Some of them had their oil ready. 
You know, in the Bible, they said the ten virgins with the lamps and the oil, some of them had their lamps burning and full of oil, ready to go. The other one said, ask these ones over here, let me borrow some of your oil because I'm not prepared. And when the when they came, when the when the bride, when the husband came, they said, No, this is my oil. This is my life. This is my deed. This is what I've done. I'm not going to share that with you. So the people that were asking to borrow some oil from the ones that were prepared, they said no. And there was no time to share. Because the bride, the husband came for the bride and took them right away. Gone on out. And the ones that didn't get none, they was just tossed on to the side and left. But these were people that were serving God as well. Because some people, listen, I don't even want to get into Ted talking about this, but some people serve God through others. Some people serve God through others. It's okay to serve through someone else to listen to what their situation is or whatever. But that's not your, that's not your, just not your service. That's not your dedication. You have to have your own dedication for God, your own relationship for him, and your own things, you know, that you're doing in your own life. Anyway, I'm getting all off the of scripture. It said, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But that, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. I am come to set fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided again against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter. The Lord said that when he come into a person's life, it brings division because some people are not saved and they're not living that lifestyle. They're living the life of the world. And so this becomes a divided life for the Christian, especially if they're living in a household with a bunch of unbelievers, and then they're not the head of the household, someone else is. But the Lord will always provide and make a way for that person to either escape <laughs> and start a life somewhere else, or to live there peacefully in that household. You may be the only light of the family, you know, you may be the only light that's shining, it helps a person. So, you know, just stick it out. Be, you know, do, do your walk with God. That's what you're supposed to be doing anyway. And he said also to the people, when ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway you say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, there be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky of the earth. And how it is that you do not discern this time. Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right. When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give way, give diligence, that thou mayest be delivered from him. Least he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might. Okay, that's the end of Luke 12. <clears throat> so, be the judge of what your soul seeks after. You can judge all these things. Be the judge of what your spiritual life is. Don't let it be uh, in the hands of the adversary. Now, let's read a little bit of 
take the limits off of God. Oh, I'm at 19 minutes. I'm going to read to this. Faith needs feet. This is Joshua 3, 9 through 17. The expression, talk is cheap, conveys an important spiritual principle. This is by Diane Ulrich. Um, the Bible instructs us not just to read its message, but to use its important truths for daily living. Without personal practice, the teachings of the Bible remain merely lofty ideas, painting pictures of a better world. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. That's James 2, 18 NIV. The writer argues that our actions based on our belief is the only real evidence that we truly believe. Performance pr proves that we have made the ideal our very own. In other words, it's saying here, you can have faith, but you got to put some movement behind your faith. Faith needs to have feet. So you say you believe in God and you pray and you ask him for things and you do this. Well, are you doing the thing to lead to you to get whatever you want? You know, I want a job. Listen, you ask God, I want a job. I've, I've said that. I'm saying that now, but I'm looking for one. I'm seeking and I'm knocking for the door to be open for, you know, something in the day hours, part-time or full-time. I already have another one that's part-time that I like, but I want to add to that so I can have more income. You say you want a husband. You say you want a wife. You say you want a business. You say you want this. And you say you prayed and you're waiting for this thing to come to pass. Did you put your feet to it? Did you start moving in that direction? You, God said, knock, seek, and it shall be open to you. This is how faith moves. You got to look for this husband and his wife. You can not, not so much look for them, but you got to prepare. If you want a mate, prepare yourself to be a great mate. Prepare yourself so that when somebody get you, because there is people out there that's doing the same prayer that you're doing, and God will put the two together. And when he put the two together, are you prepared? Are you a great mate? Are you someone that someone wants to be with? Prepare yourself for her or him. Oh, I want a husband. Okay, so what kind of wife are you going to be? Are you preparing yourself? So that when the door swings open and God put that man right there in front of you, you know, you, you're doing all the things that you think a wife should be doing. Are you looking in the Bible to find out what's a good wife? What's a good husband? Are you looking at uh, people that have been married in Christ, spiritual people that you can say, this is a good uh, idea of how I would like my relationship to be. Are you seeking? Are you looking? Are you researching these Research what you want and pray about it so God can set it right in front of you. That's all you got. Research. This is how faith works. Faith has feet. Your feet is stuff that you do behind the scenes so that when he say, okay, what you have asked me for, I'm going to send it on down from heaven. You can say, okay, when you get this husband or this wife, I have prepared for you. You know how to entertain you know how you want things how you expect things how you what kind of a person you want to be for that person make all of this happen for yourself so you're in the in the readiness of that make yourself a queen make yourself a king pamper yourself get yourself prepared look for what you want the man to be like look at uh various people and say, oh, this is how I, this is the kind of person I, so when you get that person, you know, this is the person that I actually want, I don't research this situation, you know what I'm saying, have you ever seen, listen, I'm all off the topic, have you ever seen people that look for different cultures when their children get to be 18, 19, or 20, or they get, uh, they, they let them go all the way through college, some of them get their degree, and they say, listen, the parents look for a mate for that 
young lady or that young man. And that's the same thing we do now when they get to be a certain age and they want to date. You say, okay, I'm going to chaperone because I want to see the type of characteristics of this individual. Well, that's what you're going to do for yourself. That's what you're going to do. You're going to use the word of God. I want this to be a godly man. I want him or her to do to be like this and be like that. And I want their ways and their habits to be sort of like mine. Well, then you prepare for that. You put this is putting your feet to your faith because God is gonna not gonna send you somebody until you know what you like. So when the person say, "What do you like?" when you meet them, you can say, "Well, I like this." Or this is how I want my stuff. Or this is what I expect. And if they don't line up with, with what you want or what you like, move on. That's not that's not from God, you know. Because when God sends you something, you're gonna be prepared for what He sends you, and you're gonna know it's from God. Even if you don't even get along with everything, and you say, Well, I'm gonna bend on some things, then you better pray about that situation, you know. And even when you're looking to open up your business, go to business seminars. Go seek out organizations that support businesses. That's what I'm supposed to be doing because I'm working on, on some business stuff. You know, surround your time with the things that you want to do. Put your feet to your faith. Pray and then go seek it. Knock so the door can swing open. God got some blessings out there for you, God. But you got to get in the way of getting to those blessings. Okay, let me get back on subject here. Now, it says action is taken because of a heart held conviction. It's called a step of faith. Just as he did in our past in our passage. God wants us to act upon what we truly believe and respond to prove his word. That's what I just told you. He watching what you're doing so he can act on it. Like if you take a step of faith and you go out to a business seminar or you say, I'm going to do some uh, dating or I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, you just want to fill out what's going on in the world because you're looking for a mate. Then the Lord is watching you. This Holy Spirit, God is going to make a, a step. He's going to talk to you and tell you things. This is how you get your actions your things to happen because you're going to put feet to your faith. You're going to do something. If you're looking for a job, you're going to seek. You're going to look until you get it. It's not going to just drop out of like a pie for my mom. used to say, look, ain't no pies dropping out the sky. She said, if you want something, you got to go after it. You got to persist. And when you persist, the God said, let me swing this door open right here for you. I had it for you all the time. I was just waiting on you to take a step of faith. I was just waiting on you to move on it. Pray and move. Pray and move. Like the basketball player. He ain't praying and moving, but he 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 ducking over here. And he going under here. He said, wait a minute. I ain't got on this. I've been watching that basketball. I said, them boys is bad, you know. My son wanted to play basketball, but he wasn't able to. He ended up getting sick. And, you know, he got a concussion from football. He got sick, but he loved basketball. He was a basket. He said, my mom going to be professional one day. So when he got sick, it really hurt me because it's like all oh, his dreams are ruined. You know, he loved basketball. So I love watching those boys play basketball. I'd be in front of the TV like, oh, I should probably be watching it right now. But, you know, I'm trying to get, get this Bible situation down. But put some feet to your faith. Get out there. Make moves. Make moves, guys. Y'all got to get like the those little basketball guys, those college guys. Look, they going on with it. They trying to go pro. They they, they you usually used to see them playing. I say, ooh, they playing like the, the real players in a professional league already, and they haven't even made it. I say, I hope that some of them get picked. And when they get picked, they're going to really, because they still growing. You know, some of them have not even matured yet. They still growing, and they tall already, you know. And they coming down. I said, oh, my goodness. My son be looking at like, like he said, I wish I, I could have went on to be something like that. But, you know, 
You just have to put feet to your faith. Now, I got all on basketball. Now, Christians need to position themselves with their feet. You see what I'm saying? To be of practical help to others as evidence of their faith as God leads. To be useful and effective, we must pay attention to both the spiritual and the practical side of ministry. Okay? We operate between two worlds, the spiritual and the material, and must wisely balance our participation in both worlds. You got to operate in the word and in prayer, and then you got to come back over here in the mainstream world and say, okay, what can I do to make this move, make this happen, do this thing? You know, and then you say, God, show me, lead me, guide me. God will make a way for things to open for you, whatever you, whatever direction you're going in. For example, we should possess a fiery passion for the cause of Christ by doing things that are seemingly foolish. Yet we must also draw upon sound reasoning. We are called to self-sacrifice as a higher way to live, but we must use discernment as to how much we are supposed to do for people. On one hand, we must constantly give ourselves to prayer, yet physical work must also be done. We receive guidance from God's holy word, yet we must know how to operate in the world system. Lastly, we enter into a loving, uplifting union with God, yet our hardest lessons come from learning to forgive, be patient, and hope for the best in people. For these examples, we can see that believing is the easy part. Carrying out that belief is a challenge. In our passage, God proved several things to Joshua and all of Israel as they dared to step foot into the flooded Jordan. God's will is important to God. He has a goal, a plan, a purpose for everything he tells us to do. When we cooperate, he will be responsible to carry out his will through us. Now, sometimes the Lord will speak to you and tell you to go here and do this or do that. Do it. When the Lord does that, it's a plan and a purpose. And that's how his will works. You will hear a voice and say, go here and do this or do that. Like I was disobedient last week. It was really cold. The Lord asked me to go to church. I wanted to go, but I didn't have appropriate. I didn't have things appropriate for myself prepared to go. So you must prepare two or three days ahead of time when you know you got something to do, whether it be church, work, whatever. Do things ahead of time. So when the spirit of the Lord speak, you are prepared. You know, keep your clothing always prepared. Your clothing, your whereabouts, uh, what you need to do something, a little money. Keep things prepared so that when the move of God come, you can do it. You can go. Because sometimes your blessing is in that move, that thing you do. It said God is sovereign over the material realm, a world from him and all natural, all nature must obey. He will work out the physical details as we travel in his plan. The ark represents the presence of the Lord as believers. <clears throat> we carry the presence of the Lord inside of us. God is very attentive to his spirit. Therefore, we should never accuse the Lord of neglecting or abandoning us because that is impossible. He doesn't neglect or abandon, abandon us. Sometimes our emotions can get in the way as well and go into prayer. We must have faith in God to the degree that we believe what he tells us in spite of what we see happening around us. God's word should become our true reality. You always reciting his words in times of trouble. Now, as the priest stepped into the Jordan with the ark lifted up, their show uh, lifted up their shoulders, the water rescinded and piled straight up into the wall of water around them. This spectacle is no less true for us. When we begin to step out and live by faith circumstances, we build up will circumstances will build up against us. Our vulnerability is then seen by onlookers against the backup of God's staying power. Yeah, when you step out in faith, 
uh, you sometimes are looking crazy and people say, is this person going to survive or make it? But you're depending on the will of God to get you through. And so you hold and you stick to that and you say, I know my God is true. What, and whatever you may do, when you may be in a place where you don't even know where you at, but God said, God told you go there, right? So you say, okay, I'm waiting for the will of God. I'm listening. I'm waiting for the move of God. You know, in this circumstance where I am right now. And he'll send a person or he'll do something. And you say, hmm, this was it. <laughs> you know, this was it. This was the move of God. So, you know, you don't mind understanding what I'm saying. But sometimes the Lord will speak to you to do certain things, to go do certain things, to go places. And you're like, don't question it. Don't worry about it. Don't wonder. Just be patient by faith and wait. Wait for it to work out. Now, it says, if we refuse to fear, our continued faith will see us safely to the other side. People will invariably admit that we could never have accomplished what we did without God's assistance. God promises that he will use our steps of faith to show the world that he is real and that he is with us. And what they were talking about here was the children in the Jordan River. They were trying to cross when they got to that river, remember with Moses and all that water. And they said, Moses, we have nowhere to go. Moses took them to the river. Okay. With the chariot covering it up here, all the stuff they had on them, all this stuff they fleeing from their home from Pharaoh. They standing at the river like, where are we to go? And everybody said, uh-uh, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's turn around. But Moses said, no. He said, wait for the move of God. He said, we are at the place where we're supposed to be. The Lord will not bring us here without getting us through this. And this is what I'm telling you guys. Wherever he tell you to go, you go. Moses said, hold on. The Lord told him to stick out that, that staff. He stuck out that staff and pointed it toward the river. The Lord divided the sea. And they walked through on dry ground. And they were happy. You could hear them cheering. Oh, Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Savior, thank you, Jesus. We made it. We're making it. And they were all walking through just dry. The water was up over their head. They were walking through there on dry ground, dry sand. It was like imaginary. Them with all of their things, their homes, their children, their family, everything. Coming out of Egypt. Following behind Moses and the priest was in front. Moses stepped staff out. Everywhere they stepped was dry ground and they went on across. They got to the end. Yay, we made it, man. They made it, they made it, they made it. Impossible to get across this big, large, vast amount of water. They made it. The people chasing them were falling off into the water because they said, wait a minute, they were trying, they 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 did start on the dry ground because it was still there because there was so many of them to cross. But when they started getting into the middle, the dry ground disappeared and they all fell into that ocean and drowned. And then Pharaoh said, go back, go back. He told them to start going back because it was disappearing. This ground is disappearing because see, they weren't walking by faith. They didn't have God. They was just doing that. To go after them. They want to bring them all back to be their servants, you know. God said, no, my people are not going to be no servants. He said, oh, no, we're not going to be no servants. He said, that time is over. Pharaoh wanted to keep them as slaves and servants. He said, no, ain't no such thing as slaves. I, I love all people. He said, all people. Amen. All tongues, all race, all people. There's no such thing as servants. He said, we're all equal. And I, well, he wanted them to Learn not to be a servant. So he took them off into the wilderness to teach them to be human and, and, and good people of the, within themselves with his help, not leaning upon, I need somebody to tell me what to know. You need to tell you what to do. Serve me. I'm God. That's what he said. So anyway, I got to get off of here. I'm going to come back over here. We're going to start back in Genesis. I got to get all off the topic. But thank you guys for joining me. Bye.